Gavel Sniper here, and this is season number six, episode number one of our career mode with West Ham United. Oh my days, we have reached season number six. As you know, we'll be playing Spurs in the Community Shield, and uh, unfortunately, John Gudetti has left us for £33.5 million, but I can reveal to you our number one target is Destro. It is rumoured the friendship between Bonaparte and Destro has been a key factor in Locke moving to sign Destro from Inter and Lamella from Roma. Jaffa Betting has the odds set 8-12 to for the double signing. When asked about the players, Locke had this to say. We have been after Destro for some time now. We feel Lamella and Destro will help us go to the next level this season. So true. We have been uh, tracking Destro for quite a while. As you know, we made a, a, a decision to sign Nelson Oliveira instead of Destro. Did that cost us? To a degree, I feel it has cost us. I feel it was a bad move, but it's one of those things in uh, at, when you're a manager of a club, you just never know which player's going to work out. So uh, I think we're going to go back to uh, Destro and hopefully uh, put a formal offer in and see if we can sign him. Now, speaking of players, as you know, Jack Butland, who was playing in goal today against Tottenham in the Community Shield, has refused to sign a year's extension to give him a five-year contract for £70,000 a week. We have had to go ahead, as you know, to authorise a £100,000 a week contract to keep him at the club for five years. Hopefully we'll hear something about back about it and uh, hopefully he will commit to the, the club. All the, all the talkings I've had with his agent indicates his agent want him, wants him to move to Barcelona. But speaking to Jack on a personal level, I feel he wants to stay at the club. But at the end of the day, it's not in my hands. We'll have to wait and see. As you can see, we are going with a 4 one 2 one 2 Miguel and Benzia get the nod up front. Obviously, Filippo, our talisman in cam. Olajon and Adrian will be flying down the wings. And Eduardo will be sitting in the CDM position. Szymanski will be making his debut. 16 years old. We, uh, we signed the young lad. Just a short while ago, uh, from New Jersey, he uh, comes from America. He he lived in New Jersey and he's uh, signed for the club. Fantastic player. Some thought he was going to be a left midfielder, but he's played really well. But Raphael, off the off the bat, having an opportunity for Spurs there, but a great save by Butland. He came out and spread himself in a fantastic fashion as Walker steamrolls down the right hand side. Bad memories for Tottenham and uh, Walker going down the right hand side. The balls with Filippo in the centre of the park. Drifted inside, knocks it out to Olajon. Olajon to Zemanski. Zemanski, as we say, 16 years old, signed from USA. He, he was born in New Jersey, and uh, I've got to say, he's been playing really, really well. He was on the books of uh, New York Red Bulls, and um, yes, unfortunately, they didn't secure his signature. West Ham came in, took him as Ben Zeres broke through. Pulls the trigger! Oh, my days! That could have been 1-0. Fantastic opportunity there, but West Ham were lucky enough to uh, secure his services, and he's turned out to be a fantastic player. As, R as Spurs have broken West Ham, Raphael coming in there, but Kolka with a huge tackle. Fabio gives the ball away again, not really settled into this game at this moment in time. 15 minutes into the game, Fabio has given the ball away twice and caused West Ham so many problems. As again, Huddleston, left-hand side, pulls the ball back in. Great save by Butland. Oh, and West Ham cleared it, but John was cleaned out there by... Butland and thankfully they cleared the ball. As Szymanski, with such confidence, brings the ball down the left-hand side, looking to set away Filippo, but he has to turn back, knocks the ball into Eduardo. And that just confirms the fact that he's just a classy young player who has no fear of anybody that he faces. Really, really good player. The ball's knocked out to the right-hand side to Aaron Lennon. That's really good to test Szymanski. Szymanski's just giving away a bit of pace there, a bit of yardage, but he's closed down the angles really well. Great place by Szymanski. And he knocks a simple ball into Filippo Bolaperti. What a fantastic little player we already have amongst the West Ham youth system that is renowned for churning out fantastic players such as Miguel, Rocca, Eduardo. As we go in at half-time, Spurs nil, West Ham United nil. Both teams, to me, look very tentative, not willing to take that extra chance and push men forward to go for goal. They're both just sort of standing off each other and just trying to play really good football. But Spurs upping the game in the second half. We're in the 62nd minute. Spurs are bombing forward. Looking to take a risk. Poor marking there by Fabio. Colga dives in and the ball is slotted home by Raphael in the 64th minute. Butland couldn't have anything to uh, to do with that situation. It was unfortunate. It was bad play by Fabio. Colga dived in a little bit too early. He's been playing really, really well all game, to be fair. And Butland was left a little bit stranded. But a few changes are coming on. Zemanski's going off and Indy is coming on. Tremel is coming on for Olajon. And Rocca is coming on for Miguel. In the hope that West Ham can step it up as Benzir steps inside of one Tottenham defender. Steps on the outside of another Tottenham defender. It's being pulled back. Pulls the shot. But referee didn't award a free kick. I'm a little bit surprised about that. Could have been a penalty because he was pulling it back. He had a good chunk of his shirt. But Benzir didn't go down, which is uh, 
fair play to him as a, as a professional football player. Most players like to go down and um, make a meal about as Kolka comes out like a tank, steamrolling through Spurs there. Giving the ball to Filippo. Filippo knocks it out to Rocker. Rocker manages to get past Vertonghen. He's breaking into the box. Rocker to make it 1-1. No, he's missed. The ball to Filippo. And Filippo's hit the post. Unbelievable play there. Filippo Bonaparte hits the post. Everybody would have put their mortgage on Filippo scoring there. But unfortunately on this occasion, he slots the ball against the post. And Spurs, with four minutes to go, are still winning. 1-0 to Tottenham. Adrian down the left-hand side. Looks like the signal from the bench has come to go all-out attack. Adrian cuts back inside, gives the ball to Felipe. Felipe moves forward. Singleson closes him down. He has to go round Singleson. He knocks the ball into Benzir. Benzir goes for the shot. Great defensive tackle there. But the ball comes back out to Felipe. Bonaparte on the 90th minute has saved West Ham United for the umpteenth time with an absolutely audacious goal. Nothing was really on. A great defensive block. The ball came back to Filippo and he struck it true and as hard as a rocket straight into the bottom corner. Lloris had nothing he could do about it and this game is now tied up. Tottenham won. West Ham won. Interestingly enough, West Ham have been all over Spurs in this second half. They've had 11 shots in total to, compared to Spurs' five. But unfortunately, just haven't taken their, their opportunities. As Spurs looking to knock the ball around, trying to create something. Sandro knocks the ball into Townsend. Townsend into Raphael. Raphael has just broken through. The ball's to Townsend. Surely. No, they've missed it. Unbelievable play there by Spurs. They had a golden opportunity. A great save from Butland from Raphael. From Townsend, I do apologise. But the lad at the back post, I think it was Aaron Lennon. Missed an absolute sitter. So the game's going to finish Spurs 1, West Ham United 1. And it will, as you know, go straight to penalties. There is no extra time in the Community Shield. We'll be going straight to penalties. And it'll be interesting to see how West Ham do. Not renowned for their penalty taking, to be fair. But over the years, they have won two FA Cups on penalty shootouts. As Singson steps up, dummies it, and sticks it straight above Butland and into the nets. <sighs> Butland didn't react there, really. It's a great shame. Benzir stepping up for West Ham United. He has scored 87% of his penalties. He always goes to the left. Will Lloris know this? And uh, will Benzir take a risk and go to the left as he steps up, strikes the ball, goes to the right. Lloris holds his ground and makes a simple save. I think the lad's going to be very frustrated. Rafael steps up for Spurs. Strikes the ball and he's put that straight over the bar. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. What a, a great lifeline for West Ham. Adrian stepping up. He has scored 72% of his penalties. He goes to the left. What a fantastic penalty. Absolutely cool, calm and collected. Something that Adrian's not renowned for from the penalty spot. Huddleston standing up. Strikes the ball. Straight down the middle. Butland saved it. That's a great save from Butland. He must have thrown him the eyes. Huddleston looked all confused. Eduardo stepping up. Eduardo has scored two from four penalties. He always goes to the right-hand side. Will he keep up that trend? He goes to the right-hand side. Lloris knew it, and he's made the save. Poor decision by the young lad there. He looks a little bit distraught, which is a great shame. But I'm sure his manager will put his arm around his shoulder and uh, make sure he's okay. As Vertonghen steps up. Butland trying to throw him off. and uh, Unfortunately, Vertonghen has hit the bar. It's bounced down and out. And Filippo steps up for West Ham. He has scored seven from nine for West Ham United. He's a big penalty taker in shootouts, and he's just done it yet again with constant ease. He just nonchalantly slotted that straight down the middle, and uh, he must have given Lloris the eyes as uh, he slotted that away. So, Sandro steps up for Spurs. Can he pull it back? He dummies it. He goes for it. He's put it wide. Butler must have had it covered, but he's put it wide, and West Ham United have won the Community Shield. And look at that. You cannot tell me that Jack Butler wants to leave West Ham. The smile on his face, the celebrating with the players. You cannot tell me that Butland really wants to leave West Ham United. As we know, we will have to find out. Wait and see what happens. But the boys are going to enjoy their celebrations. Fantastic game of football for the BPL and uh, for both clubs. Tentative first half. The second half, it all opened up. And by God, what a great finish. And uh, West Ham come away as the winners of the Community Shield, adding another trophy. So we're back in the office. Benzia. No, not Benzia. Bassi, they want 13.5 million, and for Gabbiadini, they want 20 mil. So, we are going to concentrate on our main target, and our main target is Destro. I do feel that we should have gone for Destro perhaps earlier instead of actually buying Nelson Oliveira. I feel that was, uh, as a manager, that's, you, you have to make errors. You know, you can't be perfect all the time. If a manager was perfect, they would win absolutely everything. So, we're going to offer Inter Milan. Nelson Oliveira, who is valued at £13 million, and we're going to offer 
£10 million to Inter Milan as well to make the deal roughly around about £23 million as a package offer. Hopefully that will be enough to secure the services of Destro. I really do hope so. The last 26, he's got a good rating. He's got some great statistics. He's got great form. And um, I'm just hoping that will be enough to uh, persuade Inter Milan to, uh, to let him go. And um, as I say... Filippo has been a very big part of this deal. He's, he's a very good friend of Destro, and he, the, Destro gets on really well with Lamella. So hopefully the, we can get a, a double transaction going, which will be fantastic. But Destro is the best friend of Filippo Bonaparte, and it's uh, something we have played on a little bit. Filippo's been out in Italy a few times, and um, Destro has you know shown a, an interest at coming to West Ham. You know he would have liked to have come to West Ham last time, but. That's the way the cookie crumbles. As you can see, Lamella, we're gonna we're gonna go and have a little uh, nonchalant look at him. They do want big money for him. They do want in the region of twenty million pounds or twenty one to twenty two million pounds. So uh, unfortunately, we're gonna let the services go of Isco. This was a very very hard decision, uh, not a decision I took lightly. But when I looked at the statistics first for Isco. You know, he, he's a very good player, but I, I like the look of Lamella a lot more. I feel that Lamella can offer us a, a great deal more versatility. The fact that he can play on the wing, he can play centre forward, he can play cam. I feel he'll just be a better prospect for the club. And um, he links up really well with Destro at his time when they were both at uh, Inter Milan, uh, sorry, Roma before Destro was moved on to uh, Inter Milan. They really did form an absolutely wonderful partnership, so I'm hoping that will work out for us. Um, I think it's a bit of a must. It's, we're going to also go for Gabbiadini. We're going to make him our marquee player. We're not going to offer any players. We're going to go in Cockshaw for £20 million. Now, I was looking on the uh, database, and I, I came across a little article on our actual managerial database and it says West Ham tied Butland down to new contract. Fans of West Ham United will be waking up this morning to rather surprise news that Jack Butland has re-signed for the club. I've had no formal confirmation at this moment in time that Butland has accepted the £100,000 a week. So I can't confirm nor deny that that is a true statement at this moment in time. I will be throwing a call in to Jack just to make sure it, it all has gone through. As far as I knew, after the Community Shield, we had a little bit of a chat and he said yes... I would love to come. Uh, I would love to to sign for the rest of my career at West Ham. So hopefully that will work out. As you can see, Inter Milan want fifteen million pounds. So that makes the deal worth twenty five million pounds, which I feel is a good deal if it goes through. We've secured the services of uh, Lamella to this to the extent that we can now offer him a contract, which I'm really really chuffed with. Um, hopefully that will work out fantastically. I can't wait to add. If we can add those three players, I feel if we can add Gabbiadini, Destro and Lamella to the club, we have, we're we going to create an absolutely unstoppable unit. We will be absolutely fantastic. Having a look at the uh, strength and depth, the key for West Ham is to finish third, which I'm a little bit surprised about considering we're back-to-back uh, -back Barclays champions. You know, we've won the Premier League Back to back, so I'm a little bit shocked about that. Key player is obviously Filippo Bonaparte, which uh, I feel is uh, fantastic. He's he is probably uh, he is our talisman. He is uh, you know our main player. Now we've lost John Gudetti. A lot rests on his shoulders, but hopefully we're trying to relieve that stress from Filippo. You know, from having to score so many goals and relying on him to score big goals by bringing in the likes of you know if we can Gabbiadini, if we can Lamella, if we can Destro. You know, at the moment in time. It's all about contracts, it's all about money, and uh, we'll have to wait and see. But hopefully, I, I do have my fingers crossed that we can add three pretty much world-class players to our roster, which will be fantastic. The depth we will have then will just be phenomenal. But we have an away game to West Bromwich Albion, uh, a ground we haven't had always had too much success at, to be honest, in uh, in in past seasons. They're a very stout team, they defend very, very well, they defend very well as a unit. And to be fair, they're just a very solid team. They work very well. Colker's going to be donning the band today. I feel that's only fair. Filippo um, decided to decline captaincy for the beginning of the season. Just due to... Um, he had, to, to be honest, he had a slight injury going into the Community Shield. And we weren't 100% sure he was going to last the entire game. He did. But uh, I, he, he felt that it was, it was time to pass on the captain's armband to Colker, who has been playing so well over the last sort of uh, 10 games, 15 games of uh, his career at West Ham. And uh, Filippo done it as a goodwill gesture, which just shows to, goes to show you that he's just uh, such a wonderful young lad. 
and uh, such a great professional. But West Brom starting off very sharply down the right-hand side, making good movement. The ball's over the top to Malambu. Malambu with the ball in, and Kane! Oh, my God, that is a shock start to the game. Three minutes gone, and West Ham United are trailing. West Brom and Jalman have stunned the, the champions. A great ball in, and an absolutely audacious goal from Kane there. But, my days, West Ham looked absolutely gobsmacked from that. Adrian with the ball in the centre of the park. Trying to create something. Knocks it into Benzir. Benzir's just floated in. And that's it. West Ham United are back on terms. 15 minutes gone. West Bromwich Albion won. And West Ham United won. That goal was very simplistic. Great movement by Benzir. Who must be relishing the thought with Gudetti gone. That he could be getting a starting place. But at the same time he must be uh, looking over his shoulder. Of the thought of West Ham signing. The, you know, the likes of Destro and Gabbiadini. I mean they are two huge players to be coming into the club. If they do indeed come into the club. We will have to wait and see what happens with those. But Tremel knocking the ball forward into Benzir yet again. Benzir into Adrian. Adrian certainly into the camp position really well at this moment in time. Trying to make things happen. Gives the ball back into Benzir. Benzir with a nice skill move. Round the defender. Pulls the trigger. That's poor goalkeeping. But that's 2-1 to West Ham United after 22 minutes. And Benzir definitely is relishing in the fact that John Gudetti has moved on to Bayern Munich. As you know, he moved on for £33.5 million during the summer period. And Benzir has absolutely started off this season like a house on fire. Relishing the fact that he's gone and hoping to pin down a first team regular slot. Otherwise, he could be looking to move on if he doesn't doesn't pin down that slot because he's been playing so well. Tremor with the ball. Left-hand side, drifting out. He's played really well, done well in the summer. Knocking the ball back into Eduardo. A player who doesn't get a lot of uh, chatter about him at this moment in time. He's uh, He's been such a good player and does his job so well that people just seem to bypass him these days. But he, he was big at the end of last season. As we stroll in at half-time, West Bromwich Albion 1, West Ham United 2. And as we say, Eduardo was huge at the end of last season, coming up with some big goals. But it's such as the fact he's such a professional at such a young age that he's, he's sort of overlooked with, uh, with what he does. But a great chip through by Filippo there, but... Adrian trying to get on the end of it and unfortunately could not. That was I think everyone was surprised Filippo didn't go for the shot. He's shaped to shoot, but he just chipped the ball through magnificently as Long picks up the ball for West Bromwich Albion. Knocks it out to Allen. Allen back into Long. Long into Thorne. And oh my days. Thorne has made it 2-2. The champions yet again look slightly gobsmacked. Slightly bewildered how Long and Allen and Thorne managed to weave the ball in and out of their defence to make it 2-2. It's a bit of a shocker, but we're in the 86th minute. Walker down the left-hand side, playing left midfield at this moment in time in a hunt for a goal, pushing forward. Can he recreate the shot that he did? No, he knocks it off to Filippo. Filippo goes for the shot. Oh, my days, Filippo Bonaparte yet again coming up with a goal in the final minutes of the game. Such an important player, such a talisman, such an absolutely godly player and again he's rescued West Ham he's done it against Tottenham in the Community Shield bringing the game back to 1-1 and we all know West Ham went on to win the penalty shootout to claim their first piece of silverware this season and in the 88th minute of the game against West Bromwich Albion a game that they have looked pretty ordinary in he has come up a big yet again and delivered a third goal. Hopefully it could be the decisive goal. Filippo has the ball. He knocks it into Benzir. Benzir is breaking past the West Ham defence. Goes for the shot. And that's a great save by the West Bromwich Albion goalkeeper. The corner is going to be coming in by Xavi. Xavi swings the ball in. That's a great defensive header there. Ridgewell has the ball for West Bromwich Albion. He clears it to Long. Long picks the ball up. And the referee has blown a full-time whistle. West Ham have got away with it. They didn't look like... Champions, to be fair, through that game. West Bromwich Albion 2, West Ham United 3. Goals from Benzir and, of course, the life-saving goal from Filippo Bonaparte just to, just to show that he's just a huge talisman. So, Gabbiadini has, in fact, declined our contract offer, which is a little bit disheartening. But we will offer him a bigger role within the club as he feels he deserves one, which is fine. He is coming from Juventus and he is coming to West Ham, so he probably feels... To him, it could be a step down, but we are, as you know, back-to-back -back Premier League champions. So it's actually a step up, considering Juventus haven't won the league for a few seasons. So we're going to give him 80 grand a week on a four-year deal, and hopefully that should be enough to secure his services. Inter Milan, on the other hand, have said yes to £15 million and yes to Nelson Oliveira. So we're going to be offering a three-year contract at £90,000 a week and a crucial role. Hopefully, Nelson Oliveira will... Um, will well, hopefully, Nelson Oliveira will... Uh, 
will sign a contract. Vinter Milan, hopefully he won't be uh, asking for too much money. I'd, I'd hate for transfer talks to break down, but it's out of our hands now. We'll just have to wait and see. As you can see, the papers are, are going on a little bit about the injury time winner by Filippo. He's so fantastic. And yes, we're going to have to offer that contract to Filippo Bonaparte because Butland has taken up the offer of £100,000 a week which is absolutely fantastic. I'm dead chuffed to have Butland secured to the club for such a foreseeable future. And as you know, we have got Danny Barrera in, and I do expect Barrera to be making uh, his debut in the next few weeks. So we have Butland tied down to a three-year deal, and uh, Filippo, his contract now needs to be offered. is 110000 We spoke to his agent. We asked, is this going to be a formality? He said, yes, Filippo doesn't want to go anywhere. Filippo wants to stay at West Ham United. And uh, he understands that this is just a trigger due to Jack Butland. And uh, so I'm, I'm fingers crossed, touch wood, that that is exactly what's going to happen. As you can see, Lamella will be coming to West Ham United. Isco's going in the other direction. And uh, yes, there we go. Total spending thus far is £7 million. We're just about to sign Destro as his contract has been accepted. That takes our spending so far to £22 million. I'm absolutely chuffed. And look, Filippo has come back and... A man of his word, he has, uh, he has signed for the club. That is fantastic. He's the biggest owner in the club. And our third signing, our third marquee signing will be Gabby Adini. 20 million. That takes our spending to 42 million pounds thus far. We still have over 25 million pounds in the bank to conduct a business with, which... Uh, we will still definitely be doing some business. We've got some more players to have a look at, some more players to uh, hopefully approach, and uh, with some more players to hopefully sign. But we'll have to wait and see how that all goes. As you can see, Fabio Figueroa, who has not had the best start, could be on his way out for £13.5 million. And I would like to introduce you to the Daily Jaffa. As you can see, there's some articles on there. Let me know how you would like these to go. Would you like me to read these out? Would you like me just to leave them on the screen so you can read them? As you can see, Bonaparte and Lock targeted by some big clubs. Just some details on there. Feel free to pause it and have a read. Hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. And I, of course, will catch you later.